Good evening, and welcome to our February 15th, 2016 commissioner meeting. At this time, I would like if you would join me in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come to you tonight and once again thanking you for the many blessings. And Lord, I pray for this board and the decisions that we make and that be pleasing to the people of Stanley County, be pleasing unto you. Lord, I pray during this winter weather you'll be with those who are less fortunate and are seeking shelter. I pray, Lord, that you'll just help them find that shelter and stay warm. I pray for our fire, our EMS, our police departments, Lord, as they're out serving us uh, during this weather, you'll just keep them safe. Lord, I pray for our military and their families uh, for the sacrifices they make. Lord, I pray for those who are sick in our communities. Lord, I pray for those who are facing the end-of-life situations. You'll just be with the doctors and nurses and be with the organizations that help take care of them. These things I ask in your precious name, I pray. Amen. If you would, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we have our agendas in front of them. Any uh, approval or adjustments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Commissioner Burleson. I'd like to make a motion to uh, remove item one, uh, the CTP for Stanley County, Town of Red Cross, and City of Locust, remove that and make the following items one, two, and three on the consent agenda. Uh, add item E, the EMS ambulance and equipment financing, and item F, the position with the uh, the plan review for the inspections office. Okay. And also on the Connect NC presentation, I think we have uh, another speaker, Ms. Nicole Revel. Okay. Have a motion, second, any more discussion? Yes, I'd like to add to the agenda something we skipped over at the um, board retreat. Just have a discussion on whether we want to set up a parks and recreation fund for, um, you know, in our budget. I'd like to make a motion. You want to, yeah, put that. Yeah, um, item four and move consent agenda to five. Is that okay with everyone? I got a motion, got a second. Um, Tyler, you get all those down here? Okay. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Okay. Um, the first item is the Connect NC presentation. Miss Lori Ivey, Cooperative Extension Director. Hey, Lori, how are you? Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman commissioners and staff for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, I just want to start with a little bit of commissioner and audience participation and I'll let Robin McCree introduce herself. Uh, I'm Robin McCree from Stanley Community College. So I have a few questions of um, you and the audience tonight and if your answer is yes to one of these statements if you'll raise your hand and then keep your hand raised throughout um, the statements that I read. So if your answer is yes to you or a member of your family attended one of the 17 universities in North Carolina's university system, raise your hand. You or a member of your family took a class, received training, or completed a certification program at one of North Carolina's 58 community colleges. You or a member of your family have served in the National Guard or have been in North Carolina during a natural disaster. You or a member of your family have prepared or enjoyed a home-cooked meal of fresh fruits, vegetables, or meats within the last 24 hours. <laughs> You or a member of your family have visited the North Carolina Zoo, Morrow Mountain, or one of the other state parks from North Carolina's mountains to the coast. You or a member of your family have had a glass of water 
or use a public or private restroom today? As you can see by the many answers to these questions, and I know we had a lot of hands raised up front, I didn't look behind me, we all have a direct connection to the tremendous resources and assets that, North, that make North Carolina such a great place to live, work, and raise our families. We must continue to make smart investments in our public infrastructure, and that is exactly what the Connect NC Bond is all about. I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the Connect NC Bond, and I have a PowerPoint presentation. Do y'all have that on your screens? Andy's working on it. Okay. He is. You got it? Okay, it's a new day in North Carolina. The Connect NC $2 billion bond referendum, which will be on the um, March 15th primary ballot, um, as you can see, there's no tax increase. Um, and if you look at um, the pie chart there, the UNC system will get 49%. Community colleges across North Carolina, 17% water and sewer for competitive grants, 16%, the National Guard and public safety, 4%, agriculture, 9%, and our parks and zoos, 5%. The local community college benefit, 350 million in new construction, repairs, and renovations to the 58 campuses across North Carolina. This will help meet the demands of a 21st century workforce. And specifically, Stanley Community College, um, the amount is $5.5 million. Major investment in universities, $980 million in new construction and repairs. The focus will be on science, technology, engineering, and math buildings. Small towns and urban cities a $309 million investment across the state. Water and sewer improvements, modern, modernized water systems. Local governments who own public water and wastewater systems will be able to apply for the funds on a competitive basis. The Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ, would administer the funds. Public safety, $78.5 million investment across the state. Three National Guard readiness centers and a public safety training academy. Agriculture, $179 million investment. One of the largest single investments in farms and agriculture. New plant science, sciences research complex at North Carolina State University and a um, lab for vet food and drug food drug and motor fuel testing through North Carolina Department of Ag and Consumer Services and our state parks and zoos um, the state park system 75 million dollar investment new facilities hiking trails campgrounds and funding for environmental education in Mara Mountain State Park I believe the amount is about 1.5 million um, the North Carolina Zoo, a $25 million investment, will make the zoo a premier family-friendly and tourist destination and create new jobs and facilities. So why the Connect NC Bond? With North Carolina's strong financial position, no tax increase is required to support the Connect NC Bond. Most Connect NC Bond projects cannot be financed from annual operating budgets on either the state or county levels. Connect NC Bond will allow state, the state to pay over 20 to 25 years for assets that will last at least 50 years and beyond and benefit our state much longer than that. So why now? North Carolina has grown by 2 million people since the last statewide bond, which was in 2000. Connect NC will state better plan for growth broad bipartisan support from North Carolina business and government leaders. 
with the state's strong economic position and our AAA bond rating, no tax increases will be required to complete the Connect NC bond projects. And this um, is a sample ballot. Um, it will appear under the referendum header titled Connect NC Public Improvement Bond. It's likely to be positioned on the right side front of the ballot. And I'll just open for any questions. Do you have in your packet a um, packet of information about the Connect NC bond? Um, I also um, have a resolution in support of the Connect NC bond that you have in your package, and I'll just ask that you consider this. Um, consider Mr. Chairman, that. yes, sir. Commissioner, I've got Wilson. a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, for Miss Ivy, uh, I know there's several projects in this um, bond that would benefit Stanley County, and I'm sure they're worthy projects. Um, I'm just concerned about some of the other spending in the bond. Um, I know it was uh, titled by the governor, the Connect North Carolina bond, for transportation needs that were originally in the proposal. Do you know how much transportation issues are in this bond? I'm not familiar with the transportation piece. Okay, so, all right. So we're not sure if there's any other transportation needs being addressed in, in the bond. Yeah, I'm not aware of any, but I'm sure, um, you know, I certainly can give you someone to um, be in contact with, or I'll be glad to be in contact with them and get back with you. Okay. Um, it's stated in here, and then I know in our packets, in several different locations and stuff I've looked up so far, been able to read, but there's no, it, it states that there's not a, a tax increase, but I know with finally over the course of the last year and the, the last, I guess, two budgets that were um, drafted in North Carolina, we're finally to a position where we've got a surplus in state government. So I, I guess servicing the debt on this bond would certainly dry up a lot of our capacity that we have currently. So there may not be a tax increase to pay for the, the payment of this, but to, to invest other dollars in state government in the future, it would be likely that they would have to increase taxes to, to put those reserves back in place. It's my understanding that this debt will replace debt that's coming offline. Debt that's coming offline from what? From... I'm assuming was the, it the, the 2000 bond? The previous bond package, the okay. 2000 bond package. Okay. This was approved by the North Carolina House of Representatives in the North Carolina Senate um, and signed into law by the Connect NC Bond Act of 2015. So I have that information, but it's my understanding that this will replace existing debt that's coming offline. Thank you, ma'am. Anything uh, else? Miss Ivy, th that uh, information you just gave uh, Commissioner Burleson, I attended a training session, and that was one of the questions I had. How are they going to pay for it? And I was told that we have uh, a bond that's getting ready to be paid off. Therefore, they're going to use that cash flow to pay for this bond. Right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, not so much questions, maybe, but statements. Uh, I'm certainly in favor of anything that's going to help Stanley County, and there's a lot in this resolution, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the resolution. My concern is, and I'm not authority on bonds, but what happens down the road, we're supposed to get X amount of dollars for Moore Mountain, and let's say another park needs more than they originally thought, is it going to take money away from ours? Also, with the community college situation, could the same thing happen? Uh, another community college needs more money than what's allotted, and I guess what I'm saying is, are they able to shift this money around? Um, not sure how well I trust the state when it comes mm -hmm. to managing money, because look what they did with the lottery. Uh, I also know that the bond we passed uh, for schools and built 
and in the resolution it said we would build two elementary schools and two uh, middle schools and renovations uh, then later the school board decided to change the school configuration so that's just a statement or a question do you foresee any of that happening mm -hmm. can, can robin go ahead and see oh yes yes, yes, yes feel free um, it's my understanding that um, the, the money is already um, allocated for each of the projects and if the money is not used so Mar uh, Marmount for example is supposed to get 1.5 million if that they don't use all that money then they can reallocate uh, the money but but each person or each project has already been um, allocated a certain amount Thank you, sir. Any more questions? All right, Mr. Chairman, I've got one additional question. Uh, for Stanley uh, Community College, I, I guess it's about five and a half million. Mm -hmm. What projects do you guys have that, that you're wanting to um, see completed with this five and a half million? We will not be doing any new construction uh, because with new construction, you have to match uh, the, the funds. What we're uh, looking towards doing is uh, repairs and renovations. We have a lot of renovations that need to be done for ADA compliances, um, and so we would be look, looking at prioritizing um, all the different needs that we have. And we are actually in the process now to go ahead and get that list ready um, so that if the bond is passed, then we will be ready to submit projects. So, yeah, just so, so you just to reiterate, this was passed by the North Carolina legislature, the North Carolina Senate, and the governor, correct? That they all support this pro overwhelming majority, if I'm not mistaken, supports the thing. And if this doesn't go through, like, any idea what's gonna happen with the projects? They're just gonna sit there and die or gonna have to eventually just try to raise tax dollars in other ways to get them done? Or that's just a, basically a, a comment. I do appreciate the investment in education. I know every once in a while you have to invest in the infrastructure of a county, city, or even the state to kind of move forward. And I know that things change all the time, you know, just because you, and, and I know people get mad when things are voted in, eventually they change, but sometimes needs just change and government just has to have the, the flexibility to wisely spend their money to go with what's more needed at the time and what's more useful. But thank you for your presentation. Ms. Ivey, I think it's also my understanding that there's $390 million that the county could apply mm -hmm. for part of that for sewer infrastructure and water infrastructure. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Any more questions? Just just another comment. I would like to get the, the you know, since we help fund the community college, by this pass, the passage of this, it will help take the pressure off of local taxpayers to fund those, to fund those projects. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Y'all have a copy of the resolution, I believe, in front of you. Let's Mr. Chairman, ahead. we've got another yes. speaker um, that wants to speak on the issue. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. I had her in public comment. Ms. Revels? I hope I said that right. Thank you. He added it to Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much for adding me to the agenda. I am with NC against the bond, so I'm going to be voting against the Connect NC bond, and I would like to give you some information about why I will be voting against. First of all, the Republican Party platform of North Carolina in Article 5, they state, we believe that government at all levels must not spend money it does not have. That is what a bond is by its very definition. The definition of a bond is an instrument of indebtedness of the bond issuer to the holders. By its very definition, a bond is a debt. And not only is it a line of credit, but you're leaving that debt to future generations of taxpayers to pay off. We just heard from our speaker that it would take at least 20 years to pay off this bond. That means a lot of the individuals who are going to be paying for it are not even old enough to have a vote in the matter. This is an omnibus spending bill. 
I believe that each of these items, each of the projects within this bill, and I'm not trying to undermine your local projects, but I believe that they should be considered individually rather than lumped into a bill with projects across the entire state of North Carolina. In the resolution, which I was able to glance over a little bit earlier, it states that it would generate $2 billion through the sale of these bonds, but I don't see a lot of emphasis on the fact that it's actually generating debt. Now, I want to point out, you mentioned the money for water and sewer, and I know that was mentioned a couple of times throughout your resolution that you're going to be considering. And in the legislation for the bond and the allocations for this bond, that water and sewer money is not allocated to any specific county or any specific municipality or any specific project related to water and sewer. That line item for $309 million will go into a fund and from there municipalities may apply to receive it in the form of grants and loans. There's another, uh, I question that aspect of this bill because why would our state borrow money to set it aside for future allocation meanwhile paying hefty interest millions of dollars of interest in the meantime but there's a subsection here of the bill right after that allocation subsection three it's called reallocation and what this determines is that our state legislators can decide to put that money elsewhere if they choose. It states that they can reallocate the funds. So that's particularly concerning for me in regard to that water sewer line item. When you look at our history, such as the gas tax and the highway trust fund and the education lottery, what temptation to place in front of our legislators a $309 million pot of money with the provision that they can allocate it toward other purposes. We need to flee from temptation and not make provisions for temptation. Now, it was stated that the payments on this is uh, replace the current debt is the term that was used, replace debt that's already being paid off. So the argument there is that we're not going to have a tax increase because or that our current rate of debt payment, we're doing so well on that that we can just lump more onto it and continue to be in the same position. I think that we would be much better off to continue to pay down our current debt and then we would have that money that we're currently making in debt service payments every year and interest and be able to apply that money toward prioritizing maybe a lot of these projects or other needs of our state. I think we would be much better off to have less debt than to continue to add debt. This bond would add $100 million of debt service annually for the next 20 years at a minimum, plus interest. That does not incorporate the interest. That's just the principle. It is said that these projects cannot be financed from annual operating budgets. I disagree because all of these projects within this bond, $2 billion, that's less than 10% of our state's annual operating budget. I think there is room to prioritize and look at these projects and let our legislators determine the funding for these projects during the budget adoption process based on their own individual merits. We were told that we had a $445 million revenue surplus for last year alone, and that North Carolina revenue grew 6% last year. If we have all of this surplus funding, and we are in such a good economic state, why are we talking about taking on debt and leaving it to future generations to pay off? I don't believe that North Carolina voters have been given enough information to be able to make an informed decision on this bond. The community colleges, that's one example. I heard the speaker just a moment ago say that 
if the bond is passed, they have their projects ready now to submit them. You understand that that means there were no specific community college projects submitted when this bond was passed and the money was allocated as line items to these community colleges. Many community colleges around the state were making plans once they were told that they were going to get seven million or 12 million or five million one, if the bond passed. So the voters do not have information on what all of these statewide community college projects are. The only thing that we are told is a line item titled, you know, this community college, this community college, this community college, new construction, repairs, renovations. What does that mean? Again, I'm not trying to undermine your local repairs and renovations, but this is not a vote on a local bill. This is a statewide referendum. Do you know what all of the projects are? There are pages and pages and pages of projects within this bill of community colleges. Do you know what they are? Because that's what you're voting on. This is an omnibus bill. I don't know what they are, and I've tried to obtain that information. And in fact, the governor's office responded to a public records request right here, and they said, according to the Office of State Budget Management staff, the community college system office will not have a listing of the projects for each community college campus. It appears the only way to compile that information will be to contact each individual campus. I don't know if a community college across the state from me is planning on making renovations to one of their learning facilities or if they intend to build a swimming pool with the funding from this bond. I think that we should have more information when we're talking about leaving debt to future generations to pay off. And by the way, this will result in a tax increase to pay off this bond. There is no guarantee anywhere, not within this legislation, nor can anybody make a guarantee that there will not be a tax increase. Even today's legislators have no control over what actions future legislators will invoke when that bill comes due for that $100 million plus annually of debt service payments. In fact, I have a hindsight analysis from the last time that North Carolina adopted a general obligation bond in the year 2000 for these very same purposes for infrastructure at within the university systems. And in this hindsight analysis, which is from June of 2002, they state, it is worthwhile to remember that a key selling point of the bond proposal to the voters in 2000 was the promise it won't raise your taxes. Its approval, however, led to new budgetary obligations that helped to drive the budget into deficit and pave the way for the tax increases enacted in 2001. That promise was irresponsible and deceptive. So in other words, they said the exact same thing. And a year later, there was a tax increase that the Pope Center for Higher Education Policy attributes directly to that bond package. I think that uh, there's also a lot of confusion about that transportation funding that you mentioned. This was called Connect NC when it was introduced as a $400 million proposal for transportation funding, which many areas of our state were in desperate need of, and legislators, many of them, jumped on that because their constituents were needing that so badly from overdue, underfunded transportation projects. However, all of the transportation funding was pulled from the bill before its final adoption. Even though there were commissions across the state who had already passed measures of support because they thought it was for transportation funding, that money was pulled afterwards, but a lot of the voters have not received the message that this is not a transportation funding bill, and the polling that was done showed that Democrats and Republicans alike, the majority of them thought that the infrastructure spending in relation to this bond meant money for transportation items. I think that they should have started clean and renamed the bill something different rather than piggybacked on a transportation funding bill. Any, any questions? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have questions. Yes, uh, do you live in Stanley County? No, ma'am, I live in Caldwell County. Are you associated with any group, organized group, in opposition to the bond? Yes, a referendum committee, statewide referendum committee called NC Against the Bond. Thank you. How did you find your way down here? I saw on your agenda that you have a resolution prepared for hearing tonight and that on your agenda so and you this was online. So you check all the agendas all the time? I appreciate your, yeah. Well, I've been checking commission's agendas okay. in the last month or so down. because I know that this resolution has been spread across our state. But um, I saw on your agenda that you had a speaker as a proponent for the bond and so I wanted to come and give you some alternate I, information. I got a couple, uh, couple other questions. First of all, you referenced the, the Republican Party platform. And I know that some of the members of this board pledge their loyalty to the Republican Party platform. So you're saying that we should listen to the Republican Party rather than the elected officials up in Raleigh, which by the way, the majority are Republicans on this issue? I was giving you the information on the plot, the Republican Party's platform stance on okay, debt. On bonds, okay. So you're, what you're saying is that we should never pass bonds. So how should we, one of the biggest ways to fund schools is by passing bonds, which is creating debt. So what is your answer to raising money to pay for schools? Just raise taxes and pay as you go? I mean, what's your solution to that? Because you basically said we should never, we should never take out bonds. Well, this particular bond is an omnibus bill, and I think there are many reasons to vote against it. However, in response to your question about how we could have funding for schools, and I think it's important to note we're not talking about K through 12 education. You're talking about infrastructure for the college system. However, as no, I mentioned- No, you said we shouldn't take up any debt with bonds. That's what you said I'm earlier I'm talking on. about this bond specifically, I know, but you but talked about, you, you referenced the Republican Party platform and you reference that as the Bible, basically saying that we should never take out bonds to improve anything in our state, whether it's water bonds for water or anything else. So what's your solution? Would you rather have taxes raised? Well, this bond will raise taxes. However, as I mentioned, our state has a $445 million revenue surplus for 2015 alone. If we look to our surplus for funding of important projects, every single project within this bond package could be fully funded within five years rather than taking 20 to 25 years and leaving debt and interest payments to future generations. Uh, but uh, here's an alternative. I have a statement from A.J. Dowd, the former NC Education Lottery Commissioner. And in his opposition to this bond package, what he says is, the portion of the bill that affects improvement of education concerns me. Having been lottery commissioner, I believe tighter fiscal oversight of the lottery can provide funds for capital improvement. So what he's saying essentially is there is waste there and we can look to other avenues for funding of important education projects. Oh, I think I, I the agree. answer I, I is I to prioritize. I agree with you on the lottery money because the state has taken lottery away from construction that was supposed to go toward construction of the schools, which in essence caused more people to take out bonds to pay for them because the money was cut from the state. So it's a catch-22, and I don't know if you know how government works, but government got constantly changes. And I know you're saying something should be set in stone, but at some point, you know, and I know it's one of those hardcore realities, what we vote on is something that is always gonna happen, that future boards of any, any type of governing body can always change it for the most part. So that's just the reality of politics, but thank you for your time. Okay, well, in this particular legislation, there's a specific provision that states that they may change the allocations. I, I do have a question. Uh, <clears throat> are you a volunteer that's working with this group, or are you a paid employee? I am not a paid employee. I'm aware that the Connect and See committee has a 3.3 million dollar operating budget in which they have paid for marketing uh, i started a referendum committee so that i could have a website to re reveal some of the information about this bond and it's a grassroots effort so i'm not paid to be here thanks for asking thank you ma'am mr you chairman I think it's just one second Ms. Ida. If, if I could say one thing, and I think uh, Ms. McCree can 
um, give some clarification to this and you had a question about all the community colleges and the 58 of them not knowing and not having submitted what their projects may be if I'm not mistaken when they submit their projects and on these bond for the use of the bond monies allocated to them that will go to the state board for approval it will not go to each individual college and if there is anything that causes any concerns or alarm it will be handled in detail before it's stamped for approval thank you right well my point on that was that the voters are not given the information on the individual projects that you're saying you support in this resolution that you support sending this to the voters for approval and so you're asking us to pass something before we know what's in it okay. thank you very much Ms. Ivey. mr chairman if i could just speak for a point of clarification since the speaker spoke as us um, robin mccree and i as proponents we are not advocating for the bond our job as stanley county members of the nc bond committee is to educate so we're not here to advocate for or against. Our job is to educate, and we are both citizens of Stanley County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, sir. Ms. Ivey, in your closing statement, didn't you ask uh, us to support this resolution that we have before us? I did ask for your consideration. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Any more questions? I just like I just like to make a motion that we support the resolution in support of the NC Connect bond. All right, I have a motion on the floor to support. Yes, sir. I got a second from Commissioner Dennis. Any more discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. I will be voting against this resolution, not that I don't think that the projects at Stanley Community College or the funding for Mar Mountain State Park or the potential for Stanley County to get some grant dollars for water and sewer have merit uh, because they certainly do and I certainly support those projects um, however um, being at the age that I am and looking at the trillions of dollars this country uh, has in debt right now that we're uh, soon going to have a reckoning day and going to have to figure out a way to pay for the the money that this county uh, owes in, in previous loans and debt uh, that, that we are certainly paying for. Um, we're luckily uh, in a vi very financially stable condition um, because we've had a lot of folks that have been very conservative looking after the tax dollars in this county for several years uh, to get us to this point and to keep us in this point. But I think that things such as this uh, $2 billion bond over the next several years could be potentially disastrous for this state. Um, and I think they're uh, has a possibility in it for uh, there to be a lot of wasteful spending so um, you know I, I appreciate Miss Revel's comments I uh, didn't know anyone was going to be here tonight but I had made those decisions by uh, reviewing everything over the weekend so um, I will not be supporting this resolution uh, for those facts thanks sir anything else mr. chairman yes sir uh, I feel like Joseph does that uh, this is uh, for some of the reasons that I stated earlier and that I would be voting uh, against the resolution. Not that I don't think it would be good for Stanley County to have this money, but uh, uh, that's I will be voting against it. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I will be voting in favor of the bond, and I do that as a member of this board, mm -hmm. realizing that it will be a referendum on the ballot so every citizen in Stanley County is going to have their opportunity to either agree or disagree with the action of the board. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries 5 2. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, the next item is the uh, Black Board Connect policy and procedures. Our presenter is County Manager Andy Lucas. He's doing double duty tonight, so bear with him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, in your packet, we have a, um, a proposed policy and procedures associated with the Blackboard Connect. That's our automated phone messaging system. Um, I think one of the key points that I just wanted to stress in, in talking with Brian Simpson, our emergency management director, um, the thing that he called me about actually after the board had some discussion about this a couple weeks ago 
was he didn't want this system to become um, sort of irrelevant or um, it's like the you know crying wolf. And, I, and as a parent in this of the children in the school system, I'll be honest with you, I don't ever answer my phone at home anymore because they call so much with so many things like uh, my kid has 25 cents in his count or um, that it, 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 Brian's concern was that'll happen if we begin to use it so much that when it's a true emergency that it w people won't pick up. And so I think, you know, he wanted to make sure in this policy and procedure that we really focused on, um, you know, those things, whether it be from the sheriff's office or from, you know, emergency management, EMS, utilities, public health, animal control, things that really were emergencies that we, you know, those would be the pr predominant uses of this, of this system. Uh, it certainly, you know, doesn't uh, preclude us from using it for inclement weather um, and or we have some departments who have identified a specific group like the senior center uh, has a, s a set number of volunteers and they use this system five or six times a year to notify a certain number of, of folks that are pre-identified so they don't have to make 50 to 100 phone calls. They can just make, you know, they can put this in and they, it automatically does it. And so there's some efficiencies that this system allows that certainly we wanted to make sure we continue to, to build into the policy. But we wanted to make very, very uh, certain that we don't overuse this uh, technology because what will happen is people will begin to just simply ignore it. And that's not, that, that's certainly not something we want to happen. We want folks to pay attention when this phone rings because we, it's, mo you know, majority of the time it's going to be an emergency. So um, you've had the you've had the policy. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions, um, and um, we'll, we can go from there. Thank you, sir. Any questions for County Manager? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think it would be appropriate uh, so the citizens know what's in this, uh, and I don't propose that we read it all, but I think that last summary, final summary, summarizes what this is about. If we'd like someone to read it. Uh, so the citizens will know. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but uh, I've been reading over it a second time, and it does talk about, uh, you know, I think it summarizes it very well for the citizens. And you yeah, I'd be, I'd be more happy to read Go it. Um, the summary is Blackboard Connect is a useful tool that can provide the public with information about critical, time-sensitive information related to public safety, public health, and utilities. It can also serve the purpose of providing emergency notifications and warnings when emergent situations arise. Please make every effort to keep Blackboard Connect messages brief and professional. Do not use the system so frequently people tire of hearing county officials. Messages should be timely, pertinent, and vitally necessary for dissemination to a wide audience. Blackboard Connect is just one of many different ways staff can communicate with the citizens we serve. Please use it wisely to ensure it maintains its relevance. Any failure to comply with said policies and procedures or any willful misuse of Stanley County Blackboard Connect may result in disciplinary action as outlined in Section 10 of the Stanley County Personnel Policy. Thank you, sir. Any more questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, I, I would make um, a notice of, I think, one typo in it, but other than that, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yes, sir. Uh, on page 2 at the top, um, it reads technology office shall be responsible for processing local request from I think that should say from instead of form yeah, that's citizens. correct okay. yes sir second okay I have a motion Commissioner Dennis a second by Commissioner Louder any more discussion all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed motion carries thank you sir Next item is the uh, county parks. Commissioner Shuda. Yeah, one, th one thing I had um, requested we talked about at the board retreat, retreat, retreat was perhaps putting together a parks and recreation fund. Um, as you know that, oh, Leon's trying to, Leon's attacking me with the microphone up here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, as you know, it's, it's, in Stanley County, we basically have no money for parks and recreation. All that money is left to the all the, all the responsibilities left to the municipalities. And um, you know, park re and recreation. First thing you got to realize is that one of the core forms of government that government is responsible for. I think I think it is part of what government is responsible for. I mean, if if we're not responsible for 
if governments are responsible for parks and recreation, then should we just sell all the land to Morrow Mountain and turn and develop it and turn it into homes? You know, how would Albemarle be without um, Chuck Moorhead Park with the swimming pools, Richfield Park, out at Jeff Shelton Park out of Locust? But, you know, it's part of the quality of life issue, and you know, it's one of those things that private enterprise is not going to be able to make money on opening parks and recs facilities over in in Cabarrus County, I know they have Frank List Park. Is like, my gosh, that's a good county park system. They bring a lot of people in for soccer tournaments. I was over there one good day helping with the 5K. They had two 5Ks going on, and they had, I think it was two or three soccer tournaments that had 75 teams from all over the area that were coming in for, um, you know, for the for the tournament. They were spending money in hotels and stuff like that. So not only does the Parks and Recreation Department sometimes helps the local also brings in people so the, the, the question becomes what do we do to help do we want to do anything to help the municipalities and by help I don't mean to just have a parks and recreation fund just to give money to help the, the cities with their budget but perhaps to have a fund when they need things like I think I read where Jeff, Jeff Shelton Park is in the need for more bathrooms I know that they're looking at um, making a softball complex down in Albemarle to have a fund so the question is do we want to start developing just like an economic development fund a parks and rec fund and it doesn't have to be a lot it could be anywhere from 25,000 a year 50,000 a year 100,000 a year or something so I don't I just want to get the discussion going and see what y'all think if we if there is even an interest to create a parks and recreation fund because our county residents who don't live in the municipalities they put a burden on the cities by going in and using their parks this way in the pool. but there you go Any questions? Uh, Commissioner Shuto, I guess you're speaking of uh, not a mandatory annual contribution, but to be considered annually if there's money available to put in that type fund. Is that correct? Well, basically, that could work too. I mean, if we start with the fund, like say we started with, say, a hundred, even if we moved it over from the from our fund balance to have it in there to start with, if we started with, yeah, I don't know what the needs of the of the municipalities are but we've been approached and then you see where they need some but perhaps a bit idea would be maybe just to have a fund with some money in in it and just see if there's a need for if there's a, a use for it I might go either way with it I just I just wonder if, if somehow the county should help the municipalities with part of their parks and recs programs and like I said not for and, and it's mainly for long-term projects and the infrastructure of the parks Mr. Chairman, yes, um, maybe this is something that Peter can bring up in the budget workshops. I, I don't think we can actually address it now. We've got to set our priorities and do our due diligence with the taxpayers' money in the workshop. So I would say let's just take it up at a later date. I'm fine with that. For the retreat. All right. Thank you, sir. I think it's very important. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, at this time, the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, second. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve the consent agenda as amended, presented and amended. I have a uh, motion, and I think I also had a second. Yes. Commissioner Shuda, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? I think the motion carries. Uh, at this time, we had just one person sign up for public comment, and I think she's already spoken. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you so much. Um, board comments, announcements, and yes, sir. Um, Commissioner Burleson, we'll start with you, sir. Just like to wish everyone a happy President's Day. Thanks, sir. Commissioner McIntyre. Uh, no comment, just remind commissioners of the luncheon tomorrow at Senior Center, and I know that uh, several of us are going, some can't make it, but just to remind everybody, thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Lowder? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Shudo? Kind of surprise everybody by saying I've said enough already tonight, <laughs> so don't comment. <laughs> well, that's, that's a shock. We didn't know what to think. Uh, I, I, just, I just want to ask Commissioner McIntyre to be real careful on this ice tonight because one of us might fall and I don't want to be the one. Same to you. 
Come here, Sherlock Holmes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.